Black History Month is like a month long celebration. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of events planned, I'm sure. Do you work with any other organizations, any other cultural student groups or anything? Um, other, uh, we have uh, ASA, the African Student Association. They also partner, uh, not partner, but we're sister clubs. Uh, they have a culture show on uh, the Saturday on February 6th. Um, so uh, essentially, Black History Month is more something that BSA has been focusing. It's been in our, our project mandate. Um, but hopefully, like we, we open up to anyone who wishes to get involved, who wishes to grow, as we do um, promote unity and diversity, right? So if we get more people involved in our initiatives, it kind of fulfills our mandate. Yeah. Um, so how do you see the club changing or evolving over time, maybe within the next year or something? Um, last year we had one day of opening ceremonies, this year it's two. Um, we're trying to, you know, um, get more members, get more people involved. So essentially just steps forward. I think step forwards are, and like are growing our membership, um, growing like the scale of our events and stuff like that. So we'll hope the best. All right, well thank you. No problem. We're doing the research to put it on. Um, I've traveled to different parts of, you know, of Canada, from Nova Scotia to Calgary to Montreal, um, different parts of Quebec as well. Um, and I realized that the experiences of black people um, is different, especially black students. And I wanted to capture that and be able to bring an initiative together where we can share those experiences to be recognized and to be imprinted in Canadian society and in Canadian history. So that was the idea in going and doing the initiative. I'm also, I also work with Schools Without Borders as a logistics coordinator where we do an international young leaders program in Kenya and Brazil. And I started as a participant in the young leaders program in 2008 and that's when I was, I was chosen for it and I was able to go to Brazil and, and learn about young people that are living in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. That experience um, touched me in a way that I never knew was possible. I'm um, working in a community that individuals was living in the most humble, humble beginnings and they offered everything um, to you. It, it made me realize that there's some, there's a passion, there's a drive, and there's, there's an experience that needs to be recognized and explored. And I, I then brought, went back to my university and I said that I wanted to do a, a, an experimental leadership program um, to be able to capture that reality. And um, I wrote a proposal to my university and I was granted um, $3,000 to go to Rio de Janeiro and to be able to capture and do research in the community uh, about learning, Afri uh, learning about African um, resilience. This initiative was something powerful and something that really opened up doors for other initiatives that came. I, I tell you that because I grew up you know, I mean, in, a, in a local community in Toronto and I'm the oldest of six children raised by a single mother. And these are initiatives and these are things that you know, I, mean, I never thought was possible coming from where I came from. And you know, I mean, growing up in, in Canada um, and having a strong connection to Jamaica but never really going there and experiencing it. And then going back after 17 years made me know that even though I spent most of my life in Canada, I never called this place home. But when I went back to Jamaica, it was home. From the, the air that I breathed in made me feel at home from the people that welcomed me and said, welcome home. It, it all changed and made me realize something special about my journey and something special about where I'm going. And I say that because a lot of, a lot of times young people um, don't get the opportunity to be able to truly figure out who they want to be in life and where they truly should go. And I challenge you um, to definitely take advantage of any opportunity that you have in being able to learn about your identity your family and your rich history and ancestry because that's the true peace that guides you to where you truly gotta go. So in stating those things, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the conference. This was a conference that brought together 12 different universities representing four provinces. This initiative brought 50 high school students from a low-income community in the city of Toronto as well. And this initiative opened up a project that I'm starting now called the 3030 Project, where we get 30 black university students and they mentor 30 black high school students. Because of the barriers that they have to face to over, that they have to overcome to get into university, we realize that we don't want to just be the only ones in our classes anymore, so we have to pave the way to make sure that we increase the number um, to get into those uh, realms and to be able, when we graduate, they fill those seats as well. I'm with Michael, the, one of the political affairs officers in this Black Student Association group. 
Um, so when, what does your position involve, being a political affairs officer? Well, being a political affairs officer, um, opening ceremonies, which is happening behind me right now, is one of my major responsibilities. I helped organize it. I helped contact and bring the speakers over here to Western. Um, we also, I'm also responsible for reflections which is a debate that we host by the Black Students Association hosts. What it is, it's a form of intellectual discourse where we engage the students in some, some, some topic, like some issue that's going on in the media. We, we proffer it to the people and see what their opinions are. Um, that's one of it. A, a, apart from that, I also help, like there's a collective effort by the exec. We have our Soul, which is a formal event that we do. It's happening on February 27th this year. And uh, we also have um, Other Voices, which is uh, sort of an amateur's night. You can come, you do a cappella. You know, if you have any talents, weird talents, whatever, you can come and present it. So as political affair, uh, affairs officer, that's what my position entails, and that's what I'm responsible for. What do you see as the, the main purpose or the focus of the Black Student Association? Well, the, the main purpose of the Black Student Association is to present uh, black culture to the general UWO population. Um, I think there's a huge misconception that people think the Black Students Association is for black students only. That's, that's false. Um, it's, it's presented by the black students for the general UWO audience. Um, as, if you come to some of our meetings, we have members, a part of the club that are Caucasian, we have Asians, we have all sorts of ethnic groups a part of the club, so I encourage everybody to come. And so that's pretty much what the mayor of the Black Student Association is. What we do is we present black culture um, to the UWO community. How do you guys get the word out there that it's not just for uh, black culture, but it's for all different cultures and all different races? Well, I think the best way and the most personal way to get the word out there is to approach people. Uh, I personally do it. Every time I see someone, I encourage them to come to our meetings. I encourage them to come to Reflections. Um, one thing I like is that seeing as how Reflections is a debate, it's important that we have a broader way of perspectives. Um, it's, it's, it, the more people there are, the more perspectives that are generated. So what personally I do is I approach people. Um, during Clubs Week, we, we made it clear to individuals that that was the point of the club and that it wasn't like, you know, a group solely for a black students here at Western. Um, I mean, it's everywhere. If you go on our website, it's, it's stated right there and everything too, you know, so, yeah. All right, thank you. Sure.